Hello. I hope that wherever you're joining us from today, you are all keeping well and safe. This week, we learned that a large number of the top echelon of the United States government and military had been infected with COVID-19, demonstrating that first, power and position is no guarantee of safety during this pandemic, and secondly, that despite many things that we hear, the coronavirus is still very much rampant in our world. But when you hear this kind of thing, or the news which bombards us every day, how do you feel? Depressed? Anxious? Sad? Fearful? All of the above, perhaps. But why is that? Well, there may be many reasons, but I would like to propose that a big one is because we, as 21st century humans, don't appreciate this new feeling of not being in control. Not being in control of the direction of our world and our lives. It's like we're on a fairground ride, which goes faster than we like, or in a direction that we don't expect. And we say, I don't like this. Stop the ride. I want to get off. We can't enjoy or sometimes even see the abundant blessings that we have. And we've had enough of all this uncertainty. The novelty of online church or working from home or quiet streets or wearing masks has all worn off and we want to get back to normal, whatever that is. We want to return to the lives that we knew, that we understood, lives that we could control. Because all things considered, it does seem that our world has lurched to a halt. 2020 is turning into a kind of non-year. For those who have finished study, there may have been no graduation. For those starting work, there may have been no welcome ceremony or party. And for the rest of us, it probably feels like we're in the middle of no man's land, between the reality that we can remember and a new kind of reality, a new normal, where we want to be, where we can feel comfortable again. Because here and now, in the middle of all that, I suggest we don't feel that we are in control. Our plans of nine months ago seem very distant. Now we can't think about or plan anything. We don't know when travel will become available and free and smooth again. We don't know when we'll be able to see those we love without worrying about social distancing. We don't know when we'll be able to sing with gusto in church or in a karaoke bar again. We don't know when we'll be able to go to a party and share food again. We just don't know. And I'm guessing that because of that, many of us will feel off balance, a bit disoriented, not knowing what's going to happen, not sure of anything anymore. And perhaps we wake up each morning dreading listening to the news and our energy to do anything or to think about things gets sapped more and more each day. But you know, we're not the first to think about this. We're not the first people to feel like this. And our second reading today, Paul's letter to the church at Philippi, was written to offer to support to people in just such a situation. Shall we look at it? But first, we need a bit of context to put it in. Paul is writing this epistle to a young church, but he himself at this time was in prison, 
so we can imagine that his own position was not so great. But yet in his letter he says that he still praises God. He is still able to praise God in the midst of that situation. And those to whom he is writing, they should do likewise. They should rejoice and be glad even when their circumstances are, shall we say, not so happy. Because Paul knew that if this young church could do that, if they could keep faithful in God when times were hard, they would be strengthened in their faith. And if they could pray to the Lord about their troubles with thanksgiving for what they did have, then God's peace, beyond anything they knew, would fill their hearts, would fill their minds and give them strength. It would drive out everything else and give them strength to face each day. The church in Philippi was in a bit of a twilight zone and Paul urges them to look for the light. And we could say that this space that we are in now feels a little similar and we need to hear this same message. Because we are in a strange place. It's a bit of a liminal space, somewhere transitional, somewhere in between. We've left all that we've known and we've not yet found or got to what we are going to be. And this place in the middle is difficult because it's disorienting, because it's uncomfortable. It's hard for us to be here. But Paul tells us today that in the midst of all this uncertainty and discombobulation, when it is probably the last thing on our minds, the last thing that we feel like doing, we need to rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. And don't forget to pray about everything that worries you, he says. Give it all to God. Don't keep fretting over things, but let God take them, because in return, he will give you peace. Not a peace like we can find in this world, but a peace which will envelop us like a warm blanket, a peace which will encourage us, which will sustain us and comfort us, a peace which will fill our lives, squeezing out everything else. And then we will have knowledge, the knowledge that God is with us in everything. And that can strengthen the way that we look and the way that we face each day. For months now, I mean, it does seem to have gone on forever, doesn't it? For months we have lived in this space, this, this liminal in-between space, in a kind of wilderness of uncertainty and unfamiliarity. We are cut off from our loved ones. We are cut off from experiences, from many of the daily rhythms, the practices that have helped us to be comfortable in our lives, which have given us meaning and helped us to manage things. And no doubt, we all long for some kind of return to normality. Life in this pandemic has affected us all and our society from the top to the bottom. But there is a positive side. This space can provide us with an opportunity to look at our lives, to learn how we can change how we can be more creative, more intentional in living for God, in caring for his world, in caring for his people. This space can bring us a kind of healing and renewal. It can bring us direction if we use it in the right way. And it offers us the chance for transformation and for growth. But there is a rider to all that because we need to learn patience 
we need to accept God's time and we need to learn understanding even when we don't understand because we need to believe that God is working is moving even when things seem to be going nowhere so I would say that if you're feeling down or frustrated or worried then read the letter of St Paul imagine the church at Philippi and their situation their struggles think about all they were going through think of all our world is going through think about all you are going through read Paul's words and take them to heart and be encouraged and be strengthened don't worry about anything but pray about everything with thankful hearts offer up your prayers and requests to God then because you belong to Christ Jesus God will bless you with peace that no one can completely understand and this peace will control the way you think and feel So next time you look around or read worrying headlines or when things don't go as you expect and you feel flustered, off balance or scared, don't say to God, please stop the world, I want to get off. But rather know that God is aware of all that is going on in your lives. And because you belong to him, he is on that journey with you. Remember that even in this pandemic driven liminal space, God is present in the darkness when we cry and grit our teeth in pain, present when we try to find our own way out of this mess and fail. God is present offering love, comfort and a lasting, calming, healing peace. And remember the words of Jesus in John's Gospel, where he says, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Shall we pray? Ever-present God, Help us to be thankful for all you have blessed us with and enable us to give our worries and our fears to you that even in difficult times we may find true peace and comfort in your loving arms. Ever our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen.